Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to create classes using StatCrunch. So we have this question that we're going to be working on. That we have a table that shows the median household income of 25 randomly selected regions. So here's our table, and notice we're given raw data. So we're going to go ahead and open that data in StatCrunch. Okay, so here's our raw data. And so in order to create classes to organize this data, we're going to do what's called a bin. So think of a bin as a class. So if you hit data and go down to bin, that's the same thing as our classes. So we're going to say bin. And our raw data is in column one, variable one. So we'll go ahead and select that. And now we want to use fixed bin widths. And that's because this question actually specified what those should be. So let's kind of look back at the question as we work on this. The question said that our bins should start at 35, our classes should start at 35,000, and the width would be 5,000. So we're going to use fixed bin widths that start at 35,000 and as a width of 5,000. And we'll go ahead and leave the rest as is and just hit compute. Okay. So notice what we have now. We now have the class or bin that each of these data points belongs to. So if that makes more sense, you can relabel this as classes. Okay, and so our classes go from 35,000 to 40,000 and so on. Technically though, a class ends right before the next one begins. So for this one saying it goes to 40,000 and the next one starts at 40,000, we're gonna go ahead and relabel that. But let's wait a minute. In order to finish this question, we need to find the frequency. So let's create the frequency table or distribution, and then we'll relabel. So that, now that we have where, which classes each of these data points belongs to, we're going to go to stat, tables, frequency. Okay, this is going to give us our frequency distribution. So we're going to be selecting the classes, and then we're going to be taking the frequency. And let's store this in our data table, okay, and then hit compute. All right, so here we have the frequency and then the classes. So now here's where I'm going to be doing the relabeling. Like I said, technically each class stops right before the next one begins. So instead of this being labeled as 40,000, I'm going to go ahead and say that that's 39,999, just to be a little bit more precise. I'll do the same thing for the next one. Let's go ahead and do that, and then I'll do that for all the rest of them. All right, so here we have our classes and the frequency of each class. Okay, so I'll go ahead and type that into my answers over here. Our first class starts at 35,000, and it stops one number before. Uh, I don't think I relabeled that first one. That should have been 39,999. Okay, so that looks like 39,999 and the frequency for that was 1. And then we could do that for all of the classes. Okay, so I have all of my classes and their frequency listed. So the next part of this question wants me to do relative frequency. So what I need to do here is pretty much redo what I just did, but select relative frequency. We could have done this a few minutes ago had we realized that that was the next question. But in case you don't realize it, you would just redo your process. So you could say stat well, before I do actually, let me go ahead and relabel this one. Let me go back and call this bins, just so when I have my choices for columns, they're not both called classes. So I'm gonna say tables, frequency, and I'll select bins, and I wanna find the relative frequency. So like I said, I could have done this both at the same time if you just click on both of these. So the way you can do that is if you hold down control on your keyboard, so if you click one of them, hold control, and click the other one. We could have done this at the same time. And so we'll store that in our table, hit compute, and then notice it's right over here. Okay, so now we have frequency and relative frequency. I already took the time to redo um, my classes, so let me go ahead and just delete these two columns, and then that way I don't have to redo my classes again. Okay, so here is our relative frequency, so we're gonna be typing those in to our stat lab and I'll just do the first one with you and then show you the result after that but you're basically just doing the same thing but now your input is your relative frequency so the first class length and then the relative frequency 
Notice it says integer or decimals. So you just take whatever's there. In this case, they all basically look like decimals. And you just go to however much is rounded from your table here. And we'll do that with all of them. So there we have it. There is our frequency distribution and our relative frequency distribution for our classes that are for this um, raw data we receive for median household incomes. We can go ahead and finish this question, but that's how you would do the classes in StatCrunch. So let's go ahead and keep going. We're going to construct a frequency histogram. And so notice it says frequency. So we're not doing relative frequency, even though they'll look the same. Um, there will be different labeling on your vertical axis. That's the difference between the two. So what we'll do is we'll go back to StatCrunch. We already have the values here. Um, but in order to do the histogram, you actually can go back to your raw data. So we'll do graph histogram. And what we're going to select is our column with our raw data. That was vari variable one, column one. And we want a frequency histogram. And we can select some of these other options. We don't really need them for what we're being asked. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit compute. And so there is my histogram. And now in order to make the correct choice from the options here, notice that all of the axes that are vertical go up to 8, and ours go to 6 by default. At least mine do. So I'm going to change that in the corner here. So I'm going to say Y axis, and I'm going to go just to match my options from the um, homework here. I need to go up to 8. I just need to, I want it to match better, so I'm going to just change that. Okay, so that's a little bit more accurate. And then also, my horizontal axis goes from 30,000 to 80,000, which looks about the same here. So I don't really need to change that. But if I wanted to, I could again click right here in the corner and I can change that here. So if we want to, we could just adjust that slightly. Okay, so this gives us a very clear picture of which one to choose out of our given choices because it, it's pretty much matching one of them. And so if you look at the options, it looks like for me it's letter D. They match pretty accurately. And now for the relative frequency, it's going to look the same. So out of the four choices, it has to be the one that looks visually the same. So that's going to be for me B, looks the same as D. But notice that the um, vertical axis is labeled with the relative frequencies, the decimals here. So let me just show you how to do that though. So you can redo your graph or you can just hit options and edit this one. So you can options, edit, and instead of selecting frequency, select relative frequency. And then that way you don't have to redo all of your choices. You could just pick relative frequency. Again, if you want it to match a little better, because notice it's a little hard to tell that this is option B, adjust your axes. So this axis here looks like it goes from 0 to 0.4. And so I'm going to make mine go from 0 to 0.4 as well. And that way it's much more clear that that's my choice over here, choice B. All right, and now I'll describe this shape. Remember our options are usually the following uniform, which means it's the same all around. Symmetric, which means it's like that bell shape. Skewed right, which means there's a tail to the right, or skewed left, which is tail to the left, or it's none. And so if we look at our choices, this looks, I would say, out of all of them, bell shaped. At least that's how mine looks, because it's lower on the outsides, on the right and left, and more of the data is in the middle. I could kind of draw a bell over that data. All right, let's keep going. So now we want to redo the question using a different class width. So I won't have us do all that together, but I'll just kind of remind you how we did that, and then that'll be the end of this one. So we still had our raw data in our table. So we just go data bin, and our raw data is in variable one. And this time we're using class widths of 10,000. Notice nothing was mentioned about the um, starting point, so we assume it's the same starting point as before. And so we would create that, and it usually puts it to the right of all the rest of our work that we did, so it's way over here. A um, couple of, let me move this out, 
a couple of columns over so it's right over here and so maybe delete all the rest of this we no longer really need these for the new question it's it's kind of a new new version of the question and then you would repeat you would say stat tables frequency and we know we're working with what's called bin variable one right now we didn't relabel it this time and I'm assuming they're going to ask both frequency and relative frequency so I'll take both of those and put them in the table and then what I would do is I would relabel my classes and then plot, uh, put those into the homework. Okay, I hope this helps clarify how to do classes using StatCrunch. Thanks for watching.